This last week has been an exciting one for a couple of major reasons. First reason being that I finally took and passed my motorcycle test. So I do now have a full big boy motorcycle license. Up until this week, I was only allowed to ride one to five CC motorcycles, not anymore. And therefore I was also able to take delivery of my new motorcycle, which I ordered back in September of 2020. Uh, 2022 and that new motorcycle is the Triumph Scrambler 900 the 2023 model it was delivered to the dealership about four weeks ago and I was finally able to pick it up uh, this week so that was exciting also on the same day Sony released the Sony ZV-1 Mark II and now Leica has also released the Leica Q3 so within the span of just one week my entire everyday carry camera setup um, has become outdated. But I'm still in the process of figuring out if that means that I do have to update my cameras now. And the obvious answer is no, these cameras are still fine. And uh, the other question obviously being, do I want to upgrade to the newer versions? Um, do they offer enough nice and enticing features to do that? So we're not talking about the Sony ZV-1 Mark II today, but we are talking about the Leica Q3. I don't have it and I've also not had a chance to give it a try. Um, I don't have any relationship with Leica cameras at all. I'm just a fan, so I can pretty much only speculate on what the Leica Q3 will be like from the spec sheet, obviously, and also from other reviews that I've watched. So if you want to see the Leica Q3 in action, probably go for another video but if you want to get the perspective of someone who does have uh, like a q2 maybe you're in a similar position um, and you want to know my thoughts on whether or not i want to upgrade to the q3 stick around so in order to figure out my own thoughts um, on the like a q2 and like a q3 situation first thing i did was update this guy to the newest firmware release it's been out for four years and it still did get another firmware update with some major features added. So the plan for today now is that I do want to take a couple of uh, cool photos of my new Triumph. And it's a Sunday, it should be fairly quiet out on the street. So yeah, I just wanted to go for a little ride, break the Triumph in a bit more, and also take a couple of snaps with the Leica Q2 and just process my thoughts on whether or not I want to spend the extra cash and probably sell this guy uh, to get the new features of the Q3. So let's go. hot with the voiceover, so let's talk about the new Leica Q3. The features that I am most interested in are the following. The improved electronic viewfinder, the tilt screen, the new triple resolution sensor, the face detect autofocusing system and the new video features including 8K, 10-bit and log. I am however not interested in other features like the new wireless charging capabilities or the improved app connectivity. I do know that these are important features for others, but I wanted to let you know that these features won't move the needle for me even slightly. Let's start by taking a couple of shots of my new motorcycle and see how it goes with the old Leica Q2 and without having a tilt screen. Okay, let's start off as you can see with a couple of um, ones from down low. Well, the Leica Q3 obviously does come with a flip out screen. And I do have mixed feelings about this. One, because I think it's not as well implemented as it is on the X100V, the Fuji. Um, it doesn't seem to sit very flat in the case and that kind of ruins the aesthetics for me. Uh, on some videos it even looked like it protrudes as much as the EVF. But anyway, aside from that, I rarely ever take photos from down low. And 
even less often I do take photos from down low in landscape and as soon as you go like this uh, the entire advantage of having a flip out screen kind of goes away. That's not me saying that flip on screens don't have their place. Um, they are cool, they are definitely functional and I did like having one on the X100V but it's not that important of a feature for me. I know others will absolutely violently disagree. I honestly do prefer having the cleaner aesthetics on the Q2 but yeah again that's just me. The idea actually was kind of to incorporate that, that landscape but I'm not quite sure how, how to properly do that. Let's go for a little macro shot so you can see how dusty my, my speedometer is even after just a couple of days. That's horrible. Let's give a little like rider's perspective, shall we? I'm at f1.7 by the way. Uh, let's go for something a bit more atmospheric so the motorcycle is kind of out of focus in the foreground and we hone in on the on the background that's a photo I want to replicate um, at another location with a bit more of a view anyway let's go to a different location Although I wanted to give you guys the uh, experience of the exhaust mode as well though so that is one badass sounding motorcycle. Anyway, let's go. feature I want to talk about is the new sensor and because I kept the helmet on while filming that next segment I decided to do another voiceover so you don't have to listen to my heavy helmet breathing for the next few minutes. Now the Q2 has a 47 megapixel sensor which in my book is already fairly high resolution but the Q3 now comes with a 60 megapixel sensor that specs wise looks like it was ripped straight out of the M11. It also does come with the same triple resolution feature which allows you to cut back on the megapixel front to get improved low light performance. And that sounds very interesting to me. No idea how well it actually works though. That's something that I would have to try in person. If it was just about the number of megapixels though, the 47 megapixel sensor of the Q2 is really already enough for me. But again, if that triple resolution feature works as well as advertised, that could certainly make a big difference. So, as you can see, a bit of a change of scenery. It's actually a couple of days later now. While I was out and about a couple of days ago with the Leica Q2, I also shot some videos with the Leica Q2 because one of the main headline sort of features of the Leica Q3 are actually its new video capabilities. Leica's cameras have obviously never been video centric but the Q2 was already capable of shooting 4K in 10 bit. What held the Leica Q back was always the slow and unreliable contrast based autofocusing system, the very punchy built in color profiles and the lack of log profiles. The Q3 now promises to fix all of those issues. It also offers video resolution even up to 8K and again it does now have that face detect autofocusing system so you can expect it to be a lot faster and a lot more reliable and basically on par with most other camera manufacturers, especially manufacturers like Sony who've been on that train for a number of years now. The only issue with the video mode on the Leica Q3 seems to be that at least as far as I'm aware, all of the video modes aside from 1080p do come with a slight crop. I don't know how much of a crop you get, but well, that's something I guess. But aside from that, I'm very excited about the new video features. Again, this is not a video first camera. The Q2 has never been a video first camera and the Leica Q3 isn't one either. But me personally, I do shoot a lot of video. So having those features for me would actually be rather nice. So in conclusion, most of the new features sound rather lovely. Maybe with the exception of the tilt screen, which I know most people will like and will love but me personally, I'm not really that much of a fan and I do prefer the cleaner aesthetics, but that's personal preference. 
And now here are my final thoughts. If you don't have a Laika queue yet and you've been holding your horses, waiting patiently for the release of the new Laika Q3 and you sidelined the cash needed to make that purchase, well, if I was you, I would absolutely go for the new Laika Q3. It's certainly the more capable and the better and the more modern camera compared to the Leica Q3. Um, it's obviously an evolution instead of a revolution, but that's exactly what I was expecting. And it certainly looks like it will be future-proof for a long time. As a Leica Q2 owner, I can only say that I've never regretted spending the type of money that you have to spend on the camera like this because you do actually get so much enjoyment out of it and with a camera that is loaded with that many modern features i suspect that you will have a ton of fun with it for many years down the road on the other hand if you don't care about video if you primarily only shoot in single shot autofocus um, and you are not actually in a position or not actually willing to spend six grand on what is essentially a point and shoot camera but you've always wanted to try like a Q. well now's the perfect time to go ahead and buy an, a used like a Q2 because i suspect that these will go down in price hard over the next few days and weeks if they haven't done so already but what if you like myself already own a Leica Q2. Should you make the upgrade to the Leica Q3? Will I make the jump to the Leica Q3? Well, here are my thoughts on that. If you know that you absolutely need one of the new features of the Leica Q3, or you just enjoy always having the latest and greatest in terms of camera tech, um, and money is not a limiting factor to you, well, you already know what to do, just get the Leica Q3. I'm sure that you will have a ton of fun with it. But for everyone else, and for me personally as well, well, while I would enjoy having some of the new features that the Leica Q3 offers, I would have to lie to say that I've been desperately missing any of them with my Leica Q2. And then there's obviously the money side, even if I were to sell the Leica Q2, I would probably have to spend another two grand out of pocket to get the Leica Q3. And right now, even though I kind of do want to have a Leica Q3, I honestly can't see myself doing that. I'd honestly much rather spend that type of money on a trip of some sort and just take the Leica Q2 with me. With that being said, despite the high price tags and everything, I just have a special place in my heart for Leica and I'm honestly really curious to know what this new Leica Q3 is like to use. So in conclusion, for now, I will stick with my Leica Q2, but if that curiosity wins the upper hand at any point in the future, not gonna lie, I can honestly see myself buying that Leica Q3, even though, realistically speaking, it would honestly not be the most reasonable thing to do for me. And yeah, those are my thoughts on the new Leica Q3. A couple of you have reached out on Instagram to ask me about my opinion on the Leica Q3 and whether or not I will buy one myself and whether or not they should get one. Some of you have never owned a Leica Q, some of you already have a Leica Q or a Q2 and were wondering whether or not they should jump, make the jump to the Q3. And so there you have it, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, take care. Bye -bye.